Welcome to the highest award section of the GSCCC Volunteer Expo 2020. My name is Natalie Richmond and I'm the highest awards staff liaison here at GSCCC. As you can see on your screen, we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. We're going to I'm going to briefly introduce you to the highest awards, and then we're going to focus some time on the process and policies of how we, how troops submit and let us know that they are working on their bronze and silver award. I'm going to go into more depth with the gold award, and then I'm going to go into some greater depth of the process and updated policies. Girl Scouts can earn many awards. There are, there are awards for volunteering, awards for working with younger troops on their journeys, and very special life-saving awards. Today, I'm going to talk about the three highest awards in Girl Scouting, the Bronze, Silver, and Gold Award. These are leadership awards where girls demonstrate their leadership skills by learning about an issue she cares about, finding a way to not only address that issue, but to teach others about that issue. The Bronze Award is available to girls in fourth and fifth grade. The Silver Award is available to girls in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And the Gold Award is available to girls in ninth, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. As I said earlier, today we're not focusing primarily on training for these awards. The focus of today is going to be the guidelines and the process. Training for the Bronze Award is available on GS Learn. This 45 minute training takes adults through the steps of the Bronze Award with the focus on the three Girl Scout processes of discover, connect, and take action. If you've not already checked out the many training opportunities in GS Learn, I encourage you to do so. Silver Award training will be available this fall. I'm also happy to meet with troops virtually to go over the highest awards requirements or attend virtual service unit meetings. If you, so let's talk a little bit about the guidelines. If you've ever attended a training with me, you know how important it is for troops to abide by safety activity checkpoints for all activities. This is even true for our highest awards. Troops must review safety activity checkpoints, volunteer essentials, and money earning guidelines when planning for our highest awards. These documents are all based on the Blue Book of Basic Documents, which includes the policies from Girl Scouts of the United States of America. I'm going to go into more detail when we get to Gold Award policies, but rule of thumb is to always check our website for the most recent versions of these documents. Safety Activity Checkpoints is often updated more than once a year as new information on activities become available. So now let's get into the new process. Many of you have already discovered the Bronze Award training on GS Learn. It is one of our most popular trainings. If you have not seen it yet, I encourage you to check it out. Please encourage your junior leaders to take it while working on the prerequisite of the bronze of the bronze award which is the completion of a journey new for this current for girl scout year 2020-21 is the bronze award intent form it is a simple form that just asks what journey the girls completed how many girls are working on the project what is the timeline and the most important question of why this project? Please do me a favor. 
When you speak about the highest award projects to your leaders, stress the why and is this really a need? The first question the Gold Award Committee asks when they see a proposal is, is this really a need or is it something she thinks is a need? The earlier we get girls to understand that the first step to bronze and silver is identify an issue, um, a need in your community, the easier it will be for them when they get to go gold. The process is the same for the silver award. For both awards, once you complete a final report, Council will mail out letters and pins to, for each girl. Some of you may be thinking, why do we need a silver award in tent form? Are these awards still leader approved? Is council going to deny my troop bronze or silver award project? The answer is no, we are not going to be denying any projects. We're not going to be approving any projects. Bronze and silver award are still leader approved. That is not changing. The intent form is primarily for planning purposes. So we know how many pins to have on order and also to ensure that our leaders are abiding by all of the guidelines. If we get an intent form and there is an issue, we have time to be able to work with leaders to make sure that they are abiding by all of the guidelines in our in volunteer essentials, etc. The Gold Award Girl Scouts don't just change the world for better, they change it for good. The Gold Award is earned by girls in grades 9 through 12 who demonstrate extraordinary leadership in developing sustainable solutions to local, national, and global challenges. Since 1916, Girl Scouts have answered the call to drive lasting, impactful change. The Gold Award is the mark of the truly remarkable. Girls use a GSUSA-based website to submit their Gold Award proposals. The website is gogold.girlscouts.org. Last October, the Gold Award was completely overhauled. A new website was created and the proposal and final report were changed. If you have a daughter that earned her Gold Award before October of last year, you will be amazed on the changes. Go Gold is now built to support a girl through the steps. All seven steps are covered in the new Go Gold platform. For example, when a girl gets to the question about how her project is measurable, the website first defines what it means to be measurable, then it gives an example. Finally, it's the girl's turn. Unlike the Bronze and Silver Award, where you submit the intent form at step five, girls should create an account when they are on step one, choosing an issue. Going for gold is not an easy process, and we learn new things all the time. As resources are released from GSUSA, or as we create resources, they are added to our Going for the Gold webpage. There are guides for leaders and adults, a basic Gold Award ceremony, and the document I am most proud of, our Gold Award workbook. The Gold Award workbook is a comprehensive document that describes each step in detail, project standards, fundraising guidelines, etc. 
When the committee reviews gold award proposals, we look for it to meet these five standards. Often, one that girls miss is number three, educating others on the issue. That is a tough concept for girls to understand. Let me give you an example. Let's say a girl comes to you and says she has an idea for a Gold Award project. She tells you that she wants to fix up a room at her church. Um, your first question to her would be, well, why is this a need? Let's say she says her minister wants to begin offering a place for students without Wi-Fi to come and do distant learning. She has a great start to a Gold Award. She has identified a need. People need a place to go if they do not have access to Wi-Fi to distant learn. She is working with a community partner and her minister is committed to making this a long-term program. She needs a plan now to educate others on her issue. That means she should be telling others about why spaces like this are needed and how you too can make a difference. Maybe she's going to make presentations at various events about why we should all support her plan or volunteer to help at this new distance learning location. Maybe she's going to make a brochure or flyer um, or write an article. But the important thing is, is that she's educating others about this need in her community. This is a tough concept to get across. Often when girls see this, they want to make a video on how to renovate a room, which is not her issue. So when you come across girls working on their gold award, instead of asking what she is doing or what is, um, ask her what issue she is addressing. Once she is clear on the concept, the rest comes easier. Funding your higher award take action project can sometimes be a cause of confusion. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time here to really talk about the fundraising guidelines and funding guidelines. All of our guidelines are based on our guiding document, the Blue Book of Basic Documents from GSUSA. And then it goes into more detail with our money earning guidelines, volunteer essentials, and other documents. We need to remember that all funds collected, raised, earned, or otherwise received in the name of and for the benefit of Girl Scouting must be used for the purposes of Girl Scouting. Funds are administered by the troop and do not belong to individual girls. Higher award projects come in all sizes. Some have huge budgets and some have almost none. The majority of projects are funded via product programs. Council sponsored product programs are the best way for girls to earn money to pursue their higher awards. But remember, anytime troop money is used, the use of those funds must be a troop decision. That means girls, not leaders. So the girls need to decide how much of troop funds they want to use or permit to be used for take action in higher award projects. Another method of funding a higher award is self-funding. Girls can use money they have earned while working or doing household chores in order to pay for their projects. This is more common at the gold level, but if a silver award Girl Scout is going solo and her budget is small, she may prefer to self-fund.
in the event that product program or self-funding is not enough to cover the expense of a project, troops, Juliets, and Gold Award Girl Scouts can apply to hold additional fundraisers. They need to complete the money earning application and it's now online. In the past, the money earning application would have been submitted to the service unit. This year, we're changing the process uh, so that it can be an online form and now it'll come to council and one of our VSMs or volunteer support managers will um, be approving those additional money earning activities. And this is going to ensure that fundraisers are being conducted fairly across their council with all troops and girls abiding by the same rules. Now what about donations? So on your screen is the policy from the Blue Book of Basic Documents regarding donations. It pretty much states that nobody can solicit donations of cash or in-kind without council approval and support. In October of 2018, the Blue Book was amended so that Girl Scout seniors and ambassadors may solicit funds for cash or in-kind goods for Girl Scout Gold Award projects. In order to do this, girls need to submit a money earning application and send a letter letting us know of your intention to solicit these funds. Someone from our fund development department will then get in contact with the girl and worked with her to get a formal solicitation letter and will process any funds donated. You can find more information on this in our money earning guidelines. I know what you're thinking. What if you get an unsolicited donation? What if a millionaire sees your troop working on a gardening project in the sun and wants to give the troop a couple of canopies and donate the funds to cover the cost of the plants? Then you need to complete a troop donation report. You can find that information also in the money earning guidelines. So what about fundraising activities that are not permitted? The Blue Book tells us that internet sales are not permitted. This means at any level, so your troop cannot design and sell a patch online as a fundraiser. This is what I see a lot. So let's get the word out that this is not a permitted activity. The big one we need to understand is the third point on my screen. Girl Scouts are not allowed to endorse, provide a testimonial for, or sell commercial products. This means Girl Scouts are not allowed to sell items you can find at the store. For example, a troop cannot purchase candy bars in bulk at Costco and the, then go around selling them. However, they can make and sell friendship bracelets. I know these guidelines can be confusing. That's why we try to have all of the resources out there for you. If you do have any follow-up questions, please send an email to info at girlscoutccc.org, attention Natalie, and I'll make sure that I get back to you. Thank you and have a great day.